Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and just by looking at the screen, can you tell what you're looking at? It's not really a trick question, this is a black hole. Okay, how about now? What is this? Well, it's a neutron star. In this case it's actually a pulsar, specifically a crap pulsar. And although I guess it's somewhat easy for us to tell them apart by just looking at them like this in a simulation, how do we tell them apart if they're much much farther away? And more specifically, if they're also emitting relatively similar frequencies of radiation, and if they're producing somewhat similar gravitational effects. Now this is actually a bit of a problem in modern science, because despite their apparent differences, at least in terms of the actual structure, in terms of the mass and to some extent in terms of the size as well, typical solar mass black holes and neutron stars generally look the same from a distance. Both will usually create some sort of an accretion disk from absorbing a lot of matter from a nearby star, and start emitting similar types of astrophysical jets that you see right here that are normally somewhat similar in frequencies and in energy. And because generally they're also created in a very similar fashion, normally through some sort of a supernova of a very massive star, it makes it even more difficult for us to tell these objects apart, especially when it comes to some of the more nearby objects that often emit huge amounts of different types of radiation. But we may have found at least one way of being able to tell them apart, at least according to this study you can find it in the description below. But I think it's also really important to understand how far we've come in terms of our ability to detect and also to analyze these objects. The first neutron star discovered was roughly around uh, 60 years ago, back in 1967. And back then we didn't even know neutron stars existed until the discovery from 1967 by the wonderful Jocelyn Bell. Similarly, the first confirmed physical black hole was discovered by John Wheeler, the American astronomer, back in 1971. So it's been around 50 to 60 years since we've confirmed both of these objects, but being able to tell them apart has always been difficult for us. Obviously with the more massive black holes like the famous M87 or Poehi black hole as it's known, just because of the sheer mass there's no way this can be a neutron star at all. This has to be a black hole. But with smaller objects that are maybe around 2 to 3 masses of the sun, like the ones we have simulated here, the story is much different. They actually do act and look very similar from a distance. And although before this wasn't really a problem, it's become a problem because now we've detected so many different collisions with massive and also really dense objects, that at this point we don't really know what's colliding with what anymore. Some scientists believe that many of these collisions are between black holes only, but some scientists suggest that some of them can be also neutron stars. And this is of course when we have to try to understand how these objects are different physically in order for us to try to find some differences when looking at these objects from a distance. So one major difference here is of course the fact that neutron stars have a surface. They have an actual hard surface that you could hypothetically stand on, although it's not really recommended. Black holes on the other hand don't have anything physical to stand on. Here we only have the event horizon, which is still a somewhat theoretical concept and we clearly have no idea what's really happening once you cross it, simply because we just don't have physics to explain any of this yet. We do understand what happens up to that point, but past that point we don't know what's going on. And so because of this, we kind of think that you can't really just stand on this object. You sort of fall through it. And although these objects obviously seem and sort of act like something out of a science fiction story, today there's very little doubt about their existence simply because of the picture we were able to take and also because of, well, the recent Nobel Prize that's essentially for discovering the Sagittarius A star black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. But one major difference between a supermassive black hole and also a much smaller black hole, like the one that would be created when a star went supernova, is the amount of light bending that happens very close to the event horizon. A typical stellar mass black hole like the one right here will usually bend the space-time and of course the light around them at least 10,000 trillion times more than a supermassive black hole. And all of this is due to the extreme tidal effects so close to these objects. This is also why it's very dangerous to be so close to them because they'll essentially spaghettify anything, any kind of matter that comes too close to the event horizon. This is not the case with supermassive black holes where you can even technically orbit around them without destroying your spaceship or without getting spaghettified. But because of this hard surface and because of the lack of hard surface around black holes, this could be a hint to how we can actually tell them apart. Now it turns out that neutron stars 
are some of the most efficient ways for us to generate energy from mass. So the famous E equals mc squared equation becomes extremely important in this case because a lot of the matter as it crashes into the surface of a neutron star gets converted into energy. As a matter of fact, as you see in this animation from the University of Amsterdam, this process of hitting the surface of the neutron star right here through the magnetic interaction with the neutron star is what causes most of this energy to be generated making neutron stars the most efficient energy generators in the universe with up to about 20% efficiency. That's much, much higher than anything else. But with black holes, on the other hand, the material doesn't hit the surface, it just kind of falls through. And because of this, a lot less energy is generated and a lot less of it is emitted from the outside. And by using the data from the older rosy X-ray timing Explorer satellite that's no longer operational, unfortunately, the scientists were able to identify specific values and specific features that separate black holes from neutron stars. And a lot of these observations are made in regards to what's known as the Compton scattering or Comptonization parameter. Now, it's a relatively simple yet somewhat difficult concept to understand, so let's explore this for a few seconds. Comptonization or Compton scattering is essentially related to the relationship between electrons and photons. Every time a photon strikes an electron, and in this case, let's just say this is some sort of an X-ray coming toward an electron, there's going to be a bit of a scattering with photon of a slightly lesser energy going this way and an electron with slightly higher energy going the other way. Think of this as a kind of a game of pool where a ball strikes another ball and then two balls go into separate directions. But interestingly, this works both ways. So for example, a highly charged electron hitting a photon or being struck by a photon will then give extra energy to the photon, turning, for example, visual light into maybe X-ray or gamma rays. In other words, if a lot of high energy particles strike electrons, they will create very certain effects and these effects can be observed from very far away distances. On the other hand, if a lot of highly charged electrons suddenly get hit by a lot of photons, those photons will increase in energy and this will also be observed from planet Earth. And in this case, as the neutron star starts releasing all of these electrons, they'll actually start exhibiting very specific Compton effects. And essentially, this will produce much higher energy around the neutron star, resulting in a much higher Comptonization parameter. Okay, it's a very difficult word to pronounce, it took me a few tries. Anyway, so Comptonization is essentially this measurement we can use to determine if it's a neutron star or a black hole. Turns out that because black holes have no surface, they will end up having very different energy profile in the vicinity compared to typical neutron stars. In other words, by measuring these certain Comptonization parameter values using various X-ray telescopes, we can now sort of tell apart if it's a neutron star or a black hole, assuming of course we can't really tell if it's one or the other using some other method. And once again, the main difference here being that black holes just don't have the hard surface to produce that extra scattering effect or the extra energy from the Compton effect that seems to be produced by the neutron stars. And this also obviously means that, well, technically neutron stars and not black holes would make for a pretty powerful energy generator that some super advanced civilization could use to create tremendous amounts of energy. Although I'm sure black holes could be used as well. But anyway, it's a pretty interesting discovery. It's definitely something that we don't hear about very often. And especially because discovering and also identifying objects out there that could be really, really small and also could be really distant has become a bit of a problem now. We're still getting more and more data coming in, but we just currently don't have enough tools to really analyze some of these objects. And because of this study, we might have a better way to understand neutron stars and black holes, and of course understand what happens around them, and how these objects differ, how much energy is generated around them, and maybe if we could use this to our advantage one day. On this note, thank you for watching, check out some of the other black hole and neutron star videos on the channel, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.